po tayo sa ating mensahe para mas makarami tayo ngayong uh, coming together na ito ng May 10. And let me just refer you doon po sa ating teksto, sa Mark chapter 6 and verses 45 hanggang verse 52. Mark chapter 6 and beginning from verse 45 hanggang 52. I actually uh, started this lesson ng makaraang mga two nights ago at uh, bagay po na magandang pag-aralan natin no itong patungkol sa pagpapakain ng Panginoon ng uh, mga 5000 men and uh, 4000 men no dalawang dalawang uh, uh, miracles na kanyang ginawa at kung ano ang katotohanan na nasa likod po nito in Mark chapter 6 and verses 45 hanggang 52 ito ang sinasabi and straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship. The word constraint means compel. Ano po? And to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida. Ibig sabihin, tatawid sila ng Lake Galilee. Ano po? While he sent away the multitude. Now, kaya sinabi dito ni Mark na while he sent away the multitude was because ito ay pagkatapos sa pagkatapos lamang ng miracle of the loaves na pinakain ng Panginoon ang at least 5,000 na mga men. Hindi pa kasama ang mga kababain at mga kabata. Verse 46. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them, and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased. And they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered. And now verse 52. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. Well, we are actually focusing on verse 52 when Mark, narrate, some narration po ni Mark, ang sabi niya, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. And he was basically referring to the disciples of having hearts which are hardened. Ano po? And who did not consider the miracle of the loaves? But po sinabi ito ni Mark? Okay? Manalangin tayo sandali. Dakilang Diyos. Gamitin mo po, Panginoon, ang mensaheng ito upang kami, Panginoon, ay lalo pang mas tumibay sa pananampalataya. At makita namin, Panginoon, ang inyong kagandahan loob. At uh, dahil dito, O Diyos, ay magkaroon kami ng katatagan sa pananampalataya at sa iyong salita, sa lahat ng iyong mga pangako. Ito ang aming dalangin sa pangalan po ni Kristo Yesus. Amen. Ang mensahe pong ito ay nilagyan ko ng title, The Feeding of the Multitudes. Sapagkat dalawang bahagi po ito, The Feeding of the 5,000 and Feeding of the 4,000. And then, ang sabi ko yun, The Real Story. Ano po kaya ang pinakadahilan kung bakit Sinabi ni Mark, at nabanggit niya, For they considered not the miracle of the loaves. Now, doon po sa Mark chapter 8. In Mark chapter 8, ay meron na namang isang narrative doon si Mark. And this time, it was about the feeding of the 4,000. Again, with barley loaves. Natapos na po yung feeding of the 5,000 at tumawid yung mga disipulo doon sa lake. And then, sa isang pagkakataon na naman, ay nagpakain ng Panginoon ng multitudes ulit. Now, go, please go to Mark chapter 8, and we will be reading from verse 1 hanggang verse 21. Ano po? And here, the Bible says this in Mark chapter 8 and verse 1. In those days, the multitude being very great, and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto him, And saith unto them, verse 2, I have compassion on the multitude, 
because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the way, for divers of them came from afar. And his disciples answered him, From whence can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? And he asked them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven. And he commanded the people to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and gave thanks, and break, and gave to his disciples to set before them, and they did set them before the people. And they had a, very, a few small fishes, and he blessed and commanded to set them also before them. Verse 8, we are in Mark chapter 8. So they did eat and were filled, and they took up the broken meat that was left, seven baskets. Okay? Seven baskets. And uh, they that had eaten were about 4,000. And he sent them away. Verse 10. And straightway he entered into a ship with his disciples and came into the parts of the Malnutha. Verse 11. And the Pharisees came forth and began to question with him, seeking of him a sign from heaven, tempting him. Verse 12. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and saith, Why doth this generation seek? after a sign verily I say unto you there shall no sign be given unto this generation and he left them and entering into the ship again departed to the other side now I'd like you to notice from verse 14 of Mark chapter 8 and the book now because of this passage I magiging buo po yung ating kwento at dito natin makikita ang attachment ng feeding of the 5,000 sa feeding of the 4,000. Okay? Now, verse 14 of Mark chapter 8. You have your Bibles with you? Please read. Now, the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. So, nakalimutan po nila na magdala ng, ng tinapay mula dun sa seven baskets na naiwan. Verse 15. And he charged them saying, Take heed, beware of the laven of the Pharisees and of the laven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. Okay, maalala nyo kanina, ay merong lumapit sa Panginoon ng mga Pharisees and they were looking for a sign from heaven. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, hindi ko kayo bibigyan ng sign. Because people of, often, they look for signs. Mga prueba ng ating Panginoon ay Panginoon nga na siya ay Mesiyas. Ngayon, pagbalik niya doon sa barko, ay uh, sabi ni Mark, nakalimutan nilang magdala ng tinapay na baon, pero ang sabi ng Panginoon, you beware of the laven of the Pharisees. Yung laven po ay libadura na nilalagay sa pagkain sa tinapay, pampaalsa ng tinapay. Okay? Nung marinig ito ng mga disipulo, ang sabi nila sa kanilang sarili, ah, siguro kasi kaya sinabi ng Panginoon niya, kasi nakalimutan natin magbaon ng tinapay. Kaya mag-ingat daw tayo sa labor ng mga Pharisees. Ito ang sinabi ng Panginoon sa verse 17. Observe. And when Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, Why reason ye? Because ye have no bread. Perceive ye not, perceive ye not yet, neither understand. Have ye your heart yet hardened? Now you take note, doon sa Mark chapter 6, Binanggit na po ni Mark that they had hardened hearts. Verse 18. Having eyes, see ye not, and having ears, hear ye not, and do ye not remember? Ito na ngayon. Ang medyo complicated. Verse 19. When I break the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? Now that's in reference to Mark chapter 6. So the Lord asked them, Nung ako'y nagpakain ng limang libong kalalakihan, no? at nagpakain using five loaves, ilang naiwong baskets. Ang sabi nila, they say unto him, twelve. And when the seven among four thousand, nung magpakain ako ng four thousand men, katatapos lang nun. Okay? 
ang ginamit ay seven loaves. How many baskets full of fragments took he up? And they said, seven. Verse 21. And he said unto them, How is it that ye do not understand? Minsan po, kung babasahin natin itong mga talatang ito, na para bang, ano daw ang sabi ng Panginoon? Siguro ito yung issue ng math. <laughs> na pag nagpakain siya ng, ng limang libo using five loaves, mayroong labing dalawang baskets na nag-remain. Pag napakain siya ng apat na libong kalalakihan, ano po, hindi pa kasama yung kababaihan doon, using seven loaves, may naiwan na seven baskets. So, anong kinalaman nun? Okay? Now, nabanggit po natin in the past na ang pinakasusi para maintindihan po natin ito. For us to understand, ano ang dapat na reflection? Ano dapat ang manatili sa ating mga isip? Observe, dito sa Mark chapter 8, nung makita ng Panginoon ang mga taong marami Ang sabi doon sa verse 2, I have compassion on the multitude. Okay? Ang pinaka-common po sa dalawang narratives ng pagpapakain ng 4,000 at 5,000 is this. Sabi ng Panginoon, I have compassion on the multitude. Now go back to Mark chapter 6. Binasa natin kanina. Ang sabi doon sa verse 22. Ano po? Binasa natin kanina. And... Uh, Mark chapter 6 and uh, verse 34 pala. Verse 34. Ang sabi dito eh, And Jesus, when He came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them. Para po sa ating Panginoon, He was driven by compassion for people. Ang pinakadahilan kung bakit niya pinakain ang mga tao is because of His compassion. And you remember, binasa natin kanya na His compassions fail not. His mercies are new every morning. Kapag sinabi po sa Banda na Kusulata na mercies and compassion, magkaisa yun. The compassion of the Lord. Okay? Kanya na binasa natin sa lamentation. Ang pinansin po natin eh, ang kanyang mercies ay multitude. And we have multitudes of people here. Oh. Now, we go now to the bottom line. Ano po? Ito po palang pagpapakain ng Panginoon sa maraming maraming tao using small no five and seven loaves nagpakain siya ng maraming maraming tao ay picture po ito o type ito ng mercy ng Panginoon ng compassion ng ating Panginoon and his compassions fail not his mercy ay multitudes and multitudes and multitudes at hindi lang po sapat sa pagpapakain ng marami kundi sobra-sobra pa at mayroong pang natitira. Now, kaya po itong kwentong ito ay naroon ng pinaka-core nito. This talks about the great, great mercy of God. His compassions. Ang kagandahang loob ng ating Panginoon na hindi po mauupos Ito'y sapat at higit pa sa lahat ng ating pangangailangan. Now, let's go back to Mark chapter 6. Pagkatapos ng pakainin ng Panginoon yung laman libo, ang sabi niya, He constrained them to go across sa Lake Galilee. Ano po? Maalala niyo. He constrained them. He compelled them. Tumawid. Okay? So, tumawid sila. Hindi kasama ang Panginoon. Ang ginawa niya, ay umaki sa bundok at siya'y nanalangin. Okay? And at even, ang even po ay ala sa is, He saw them toiling in rowing. Okay? Ang across po sa Lake Galilee until Bethsaida would have taken them about three or four hours. Pero nine hours na. It was already the fourth watch of the night. Yung pinakahuling quarter ng gabi from between three to six o'clock in the morning. At yung even, alas sa isang gabi, they were already toiling in rowing. Hindi sila makausad-usad. Ano po? Ano po kayang dahil? Anong dahilan kung ba't pinatawid sila ng ating Panginoon? Doon sa Lake Galilee, going to Bethsaida, at hindi sumama ang Panginoon. Well, makikita po natin ito again sa Mark chapter 6. Ano po ang sinasabi doon? Ang nangyari po doon sa Mark chapter 6, no? Lalo na doon sa pinakahuling bahagi, no? doon sa verse uh, 53 of Mark chapter 6. 
Ito po ang nangyari. No? And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Genesaret and drew to the shore. So nakatawid na sila. Tapos na yung pangyayari. Talatawan po natin sa sandali, babalikan natin yan. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him. Verse 55 of Mark chapter 6. And ran through that whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch if it were but the border of his garment, and as many as touch him were made whole. You know what? Kahit pagtawid po ng Lake Galilee towards Bethsaida, they came to Genesaret. Ano po ang naging core, ang pinakadahilan? It's still the compassion of the Lord. You observe that. Kaya, the compassion and mercy of Christ made him to feed thousands of people at yung compassion na nire-represent po ng pagkain na yan ay sobra-sobra pa. Kaya nung tumuwid yung mga disipulo, it was also for the reason that the compassion of Christ might reach those on the other side. Okay? Now, alam niyo po, tayo bilang Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church, meron tayong ministry. Okay? And we are not a church simply because we want to be a church. We are not a work of the Lord because that's what we do. Hindi po. We are a work of the Lord because we are in the work of compassion. Tayo po ay nasa ministry because of the mercy of Christ in us. The mercy of God in us. Ano po? Sabi ni Paul doon sa 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 1 and 2. Look with me there. So nakita natin ang pinaka core, ano po, ang pinaka sense, ang pinaka essence ng pagpapakain ng Panginoon ay his compassion and mercy. Hanggang tamawid sila, compassion and mercy. And why do we exist as Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church? Why do we exist as churches? Because of the compassion and mercy of God. And the reason why we have ministry is also because of His compassion and mercy. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 1 and 2, and Paul says this, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. Kung kaya nga po, ang ating pong ministry, ang ating gawain, the work that we are in, is a work because of the mercy of God. And because we have received mercy, we faint not. Ang pinakahilan kung bakit tayo narinito ay ang mercy din po ng ating Panginoon. Nang tayo ay dumulog sa Panginoon at tayo nagkaroon ng ministry, ang sabi ng Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, sabi nito, by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies. When we surrender our lives to do the work of God, it was because of the mercies of God to us. As His people, ang sinasabi ni Peter po sa atin, we are a people, nung araw we do not have mercy, but we obtained mercy. Kung kaya nga po, this is a message of mercy. Magmula doon sa figure ng tinapay na ginamit ng Panginoon na sobra-sobra, it speaks of the mercy of God to us. Kaya po, ang lahat ng ating pagkilos ay dahil sa mercy ng Panginoon. Dumadaloy sa pamamagitan ng kanyang mga anak. So let's consider at this time, paano ang mercy ng Panginoon ay nakita sa kanilang pagtawid? Alam niyo, ang sabi nga ni Mark, Kanyang na binanggit natin. They considered not the miracle of the loaves. Well, ang pinakaibig sabihin po ni Mark na ito, they considered not the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ that they need to understand in the feeding of the 5,000 and even more that this mercy ay multitude and multitude and multitude. Kung kaya kahit nung sila ay tumatawid na, 
hindi nila nakita po yun because their heart was hardened. But look, kahit po yung pagtawid is in the mercy of Christ. Lahat po ng ating pagkilos, kahit yung ating kalalagyan ngayon, yung pagtawid natin mga kapatid, sa kalagitnaan ng pandemic na ito, sa kalagitnaan ng quarantine na ito, sa kalagitnaan ng lahat ng challenges natin sa buhay, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. His mercies fail not. His compassions fail not. And we need to see this. Para tayong katulad ng mga disipulong tumatawid. Ano po? And we need to see how the mercy of God comes to us. Number one, in His mercy, He constrained them to go. Tumawid kayo. Sapagkat ako'y merong mercy para sa mga nasa kabila. Ang aking kahabagan ay hindi lang sapat para dito, kundi sapat para nasa naroon. And I need you to go. I need you to go. I need you to be willing to go. Kung kaya tayo po ay church, is because of this mercy that is upon us, that we need to reach out to even more people because of the mercy of God. In His mercy, He constrained them to go. They were not willing, but He compelled them. Lalo pa silang nalugmok nung hindi sumama ang Panginoon. Hindi ba? Pero teka muna, alam niyo po ba, Nung sila'y pumagitna na doon sa karagatan, anong ginagawa ng Panginoon habang sila'y naroon? Naglalakbay sila. Nananalangin po ang Panginoon doon sa bundok. You know why? Because in His mercy, na kahit hindi nila ma-appreciate na naroon ang Panginoon sa akin nilang kalagitnaan, kahit sinasabi nila, malungkot dito, hirap na hirap na kami, tumawid. The Lord Jesus Christ was keeping on ministering for them. Praying for them, lifting them up. Precisely how the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8, how he describes the Spirit. Alam niyo po ba kahit po ngayon, ano po, hindi natin alam kung anong haharapin natin. Hindi natin alam kung ano ang, kung ano pa ipapanalangin natin. Hindi nga natin alam kung magpapatuloy tayo under quarantine. Hindi natin alam ang kinabukasan ng ating kaaway na COVID-19 na ito, ang ating kaaway na coronavirus, hindi natin nakikita. Baka mamaya may kasalamuha tayo, may makasalubong tayo na kahit asymptomatic ay nakakahawa pala. We do not know. Ang sabi ng Banal Kasulatan, we even do not know what to pray for. Pero alam niyo po ba, ang sabi ni Apostle Paul, doon po sa, doon sa uh, Romans chapter 8, so Romans chapter 8, ito ang sinasabi. Ano? Eh, Romans chapter 8 and uh, verse, verse uh, uh, 26. Ang sabi po rito sa so verse 26 ng Romans chapter 8. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And precisely that was what the Lord Jesus Christ was doing up on the mountain. Alam niyo po ba itong talatang ito, totoo hanggang ngayon? We may not appreciate the physical presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in us. But you know what? We are in the Spirit. And this verse is true na kahit saan po tayo naroon, His Spirit ministers to us and He helps our weakness. He helps our infirmities. Kaya in His mercy, He prayed for them. He ministered to them. Now, anong sabi nung Mark chapter 6 and verse 47? Balikan po natin doon. No? Mark chapter 6 and verses 47 to 48. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling in rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea. What happened here? You know what? In his mercy, he kept watch over them. While they were in the midst, the Lord was actually looking at them. Ang sabi po rito, he saw them toiling in rowing. There was not a moment na hindi alam ng Panginoon ang kanilang nararanasan. 
Ano mang hirap yan? Ano mang challenge yan? Ano mang hinaharap nila? The Lord was well aware because He kept watch. I remember that song, His eye is on the sparrow. And He watches over us. My heavenly Father watches over me. Now take comfort. It is because of the mercies of God that He watches over us. Minsan po eh, nag-aadala tayo para bang iniwanan tayo ng Panginoon. Panalangin tayo ng panalangin. Pastor, pagod na po ako. Araw-araw, sobrang two months na, panalangin tayo ng panalangin na para bang walang tugon ng Panginoon. Teka muna. He's watching them. They were nine hours already rowing, toiling in rowing, more than, but the Lord was keeping watch. That's His mercy. You know, kapag naalala ko po ito, eh, minsan eh, masyado nating iniinsulto ang kagandahang loob ng Panginoon na para bang wala tayong dahilan para magpasalamat tayo. Wala tayong dahilan para sabihin sa Panginoon ni Lord, Kaya nga napaganda nung awit na ang sinasabi, eh, uh, God wants to hear you sing. You know? At hindi lang po ito. No? Number four, in His mercy, He came to them. Oh, at the fourth watch of the night, He came walking upon the sea. Alam niyo po, Ito ang nangyari doon eh. Nung lumalakad na ang Panginoon, hindi nila na-realize it was the Lord. Kaya ang hiyawan nila, may multo. May multo. It is a spirit. Okay? And they could not appreciate that it was actually the Lord Jesus Christ walking on top of the water. Dito po tayo natigil ng ating mensahe. Alam niyo many times, hindi natin nakikita ang pagkilos ng Panginoon. Hindi natin ang ating pong senses ay masyadong physical na hindi natin na sense that it's the Lord working. It's the Lord coming to us. It is the Lord saying, fear not, ako ito. That was what the Lord said. Fear not, I am He. You know, eh sabi pa nga ni John, I mean ni Peter, Doon sa book of John, ang sabi niya, Panginoon, kung ikaw nga yan, tawagin mo nga ako. O sige, halika, sabi ng Panginoon. That's found in the book of John. Ang ginawa ni Peter, tumalun siya. And while looking at the Lord Jesus Christ, he was able to walk on top of the water. Pero nung narandaman niya po yung, yung, anong, an, yung, yung hampas ng malamig na tubig ng dagat sa kanyang mga paa, he became afraid. And he began to sink. And he said, Lord, save me. And the Lord the Lord took his hand. Alam niyo po, minsan, nagkakamali tayo ng malaki kapag ang ating senses ay masyadong physical. And we do not understand. Pahinggan niyo po maigi, ano? Alam niyo po, ako bilang pastor, palagi akong dumadalangin sa Panginoon. Ang unang mensahe ay sa akin muna eh. Whatever I tell you, whatever I preach to you, sa akin muna nangungusap ang Panginoon. And I would be saying, Lord, let this be true to me first before this would be true to your people. You know what the Lord Jesus Christ sometimes will come to me. Hindi po nakikita ang physical. But you know what? He comes to me through His Word. He comes to me through His Word. And His Spirit speaks to me. And you know what? Many times, sa kalagitnaan po ng ating kalalagyan, hindi natin inaasahan May tatawag, Pastor, pinapanalangin kita. Are you listening? Pastor, we are praying for you. Walang kaabog-abog. Alam niyo po ba, na wala tayong willingness na gawin yun eh. Naan? Kahit po minsan, Pastor, meron akong ano, meron akong bigas dito, meron akong manok dito para sa mga kapatiran. Hindi natin nakikita that it's the Lord working, coming to us. Are you listening? You know, I'm blessed because many of our people sa lighthouse po, talagang kumikilo sila. Pero tingnan po natin ito, hindi po tayo lang yun. Why? Because the Spirit uses people to minister. Are you listening? And He comes to us. 
And we need to say, kahit sino pa naghatid niyan, ang Panginoon na nagpadala, and it is the Lord coming to us right where we are. Minsan, alam niyo po eh, ang ipapadala ng Panginoon, mga nurses, mga doktor, para bigyan tayo ng atensyon. Ang ipapadala ng Panginoon ay physical na mga mga gamot para sa atin. Kahit po yung mga pagkilos na ito. Comfort, verses, songs. Alam niyo po eh, umawit kami ang dalawa ni Zef. Tunuruan ko si Zef nung awit na he wants, God wants to hear you sing. Eh nakita ko lang kanina bago ako, bago yung ating coming together, more than 22,000 na po ang views. At madaming nagko-comment, Pastor, thank you for this song. Comforted us. Ako ba yun? No, it's not me. It is the Lord. It is the Lord. He comes. In His mercy, He came to them. And we need to have the sense, even spiritually, to say, Lord, thank you for coming to me. You know, there was an old woman na mahirap na mahirap siya. He was al- she was alone. And she was always saying, Lord, give me this bread. Eh, doon sa labas, mayroong mga kalalakihang binatilyo na narinig siyang palaging dumala. Ang ginawa nila, tinapunan siya ng bagete. <laughs> Tinapun sa bintana. <laughs> Nanalangin yung lady, sabi, Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you, you brought me your grace. Sabi ng mga binatilyo, Uy, galing sa amin yan, binato namin yan. Ang sabi ng lady, kahit sino pa nag-deliver nito, it was the Lord who sent it. Many times the Lord comes to us. And may we have that sense that He it is that comes to us. Number five. You know what? When He came, He took away their fear. Oh, alam niyo po, sa kalagitnaan ng ating kalalagyan, wala pong makapag-aalis ng ating takot. Believe you me. Kahit uminom ka na ng uminom ng maraming gamot, ni hindi mo nga alam kung tama yung iniinom mo. Hindi mo alam kung paano magririak ang katawan mo. You can only pray to the Lord, Lord, take away my fear. I remember the psalmist when he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Is such a beautiful thing. And in his mercy, he took away their fear. Albeit, mga kapatid, they had to be rebuked. Lalo na si Peter. You know, Panginoon, kung ikaw nga iyan, tawagin mo nga ako, tinawag siya ng Panginoon. Okay? Lumakad siya sa ibabaw ng tubig. You know? Eh, nung maramdaman niya yung, pas, yung hampas ng, ng tubig, eh, nalunod siya. You know, ang sabi ng Panginoon sa kanya, bakit ka nagduda? Why did you doubt? You know what? Doubt is an opposite thing sa pagkilala, sa pag-recognize sa mercy ng Panginoon. Wala pong room ang doubts. Walang room ang kahit na anuman, mga kapatid. Kung kinikilala natin ang kadakilaan ng kahabagan ng Panginoon, in His tender mercies, He came to us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What can He do? I mean, He that spared not His own Son, how shall He not with Him freely give us also all things? Yan ang sinasabi ni Apostle Paul. You see, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, when the Lord came to them, he took away their fear. At kinakailangan gayon din po tayo. When we fail to see His mercy, fear will come. Asahan niyo po yan. Okay? Kapag hindi natin tiningnan ang kanyang kahabagan, fear will always be in our hearts. Kaya alam niyo po, pusposin lang natin ang ating sarili ng kahabagan ng Panginoon. Before we did not have mercy, but right now, because of God's grace to us, we obtained mercy. Yun ang sinasabi ni Peter. Kaya pagyamanin po natin ng kahabagan ng Panginoon sa ating mga puso so that this all this fear will be out. Kahit ano man fear po iyan. Eh, sinatakot na sila sa multo. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, it is I. Okay? 
Nagduda si Peter? Oh, bakit ka nag-doubt? Naging rebuke po sa kanila yan. You know why? Sapagkat na sinasabi nga po natin, when we talk about the mercies of God, there is no reason for fear. Sunod po, letter F. A, B, C, D, E, F. Pang anim. Okay? In His mercy, He brought them across. Oh, yes. Look at verse, uh, verse 51 of Mark chapter 6. And He went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased. And they were so amazed in themselves beyond measure, and wondered. Okay? Nawala yung takot po nila. And then, alam niyo po eh, ang nangyari, bigla na lang silang nakarating sa kabila. <laughs> okay? Bigla silang nakarating sa kabila. Tinan po natin yung sinasabi. Balikan natin yung Mark chapter 6. Ano? Mark chapter 6. Hindi ba hirap na hirap silang tumuwid? No? Ang sabi dito eh, uh, uh, And when they had passed over, sa so verse 53, immediately nakarating sila. In His mercy, they were brought across. It will still be the mercy of God, the compassion of God that will bring us through. Ano man ang sabihin ng government, ano man ang sabihin ng mga doktor, ano man ang sabihin na kung sino may solusyon dito, Ano man ang sabihin ng kung anong mga malalaking mga mga bansa na tumut maaring tumulong sa atin. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. He will see us through. Lastly, number seven. In verse 52, ang sabi po, they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. Para po sa atin, ang pinaka-bottom line na ito, consider the mercies of God. Hindi lang po yung loaves. Kasi, ang tao masyadong, masyadong belly focused. <laughs> ang sabi nga ng banal na kasulatan, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame. Kaya kapag belly po ang ating dinodiyos, hindi natin makikita ito. Hindi natin makikita ang mercy ng Panginoon. So, balit wag mag matigas ang ating puso. Consider the mercy of God. Consider the compassion of God. Sobra, sobra. More than enough to feed thousands of people. Meron pang baskets na sobra. But let's consider this today. Ano man pong yung kalalagyan, the mercy of God is enough for you and even more than enough. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, dito po tayo matatapos. Ang sinasabi dito ni Peter ay ito, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, who are kept by the power of God, wherein ye greatly rejoice, and even sa trial of your faith, meron tayong darating na appealing of the Lord Jesus Christ because of His abundant mercy. Alam niyo po kung bakit nasabi ni Peter yan? Because he learned. He learned the hard way. You know? Siguro kinakansyawan siya ng mga disciples. Oh, no, no, no. Eh, ikaw kasi pabida-bida ka. Oh, but you know what? He learned. Ang sabi ng Panginoon kay Peter, when you are converted, and when you have the sense now ng mercy ng Panginoon, strengthen the brethren. And that's why he wrote First and Second Peter. At napakaganda po that this mercy of God is in us. Kaya balikan natin yung First Peter chapter 2 and verses 9 and 10. 
bilang pagwawakas. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. I talk to you now. Look at the mercy of God. Huwag natin pong tawaran. Let, let us not allow, mga kapatid, na ang ating mga puso, ang ating mga kaisipan, ang ating damdamin ay masyado matigas na hindi natin makita ang sinasabi ng Panginoon. I have compassion on the multitude. And you being part of the ministry is part actually of how I extend mercy to everyone. Alam niyo po, we need to look at this. We are God's people and we need to do something. And the mercy of God can flow to us. Come to the Lord today and say, Lord, I surrender to you. Your mercies are great. And as this music plays softly, you can come to the Lord today. Kung hindi pa po kayo ligtas, kung hindi pa kayo tumanggap kay Kristo, now is the time. In His mercy, He says, trust Him today. Receive Christ in your heart and say, Lord, I am a sinner. I need a Savior. You are the only Savior and Lord that I need. Accept Christ in your heart. Tayo naman mga mana ng palataya. Is our hearts, is our heart hardened that we cannot consider the mercy of God? It's not just basically the miracle of the loaves. It is the great, tender, multitude mercies of God, His compassion. And we are in it. And we need not faint. We need not faint. All throughout, taglay natin ang kanyang kahabagan sa atin. We have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we faint not. Or you need to come to the Lord today. You have not surrendered your life. Ang sabi ni, ni Paul, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, dear God, for this message, a message about your mercy, a message about your compassion, a message that tells us, Lord, that you, your mercy is so great. Your mercy is multitude. Your mercy, dear God, is something that we should appreciate. Oh God, let us have the sense to recognize the great mercies you have, that we need not, we need not faint. Thank you for the ministry you've given to us. We are yours. We are your people. Before, we did not have mercy, but right now, we have your tender mercies. Panginoon, patawad po sa mga sandali na hindi po namin kinikilala ang iyong kahabagan sa amin. Itatawid niyo kami sapagkat, Panginoon, hindi po tumitigil ang daloy ng iyong kahabagan sa aming lahat. Puruhin ang iyong pangalan. Gamitin mo ang mensaheng ito upang ipagtibay po kami lahat for your glory, for your honor, that you may be pleased in everything. This we pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. At sana ay naging pagpapala po sa inyo mensaheng ito. The very reason why the Lord fed the 5,000 men and the 4,000 men at sobra-sobra pa ang natira because His mercies fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faith.